me to introduce you to the sock toe chimney. This is a method I've been teaching for ooh, 25 plus years about as a way of making it easier to graft the toes of your socks. Also introducing you to the wonders of waste yarn. So the dark blue is my completed sock toe and on completion of the sock toe at the side of the sock, I've tied on a piece of contrasting, similar weight, solid coloured waist yarn and worked about five or six rounds of stocking stitch. The chimney needs to be long enough to tuck down inside the sock. And this gives you a colour illustrated guide to grafting. Grafting, sometimes called Kitchener stitch, is simply a row of knitted stitches threaded in with a darning needle. And we know that the waist yarn stitches connect perfectly with our knitted stitches. So all we have to do is copy the way they intersect on this side and on this side and we will unite our sock fabric together. The first thing when tucking the chimney inside is to make sure you fold the toe so the sides are at the side. Um, it wouldn't work so nicely if you didn't fold it correctly. So step one, fold it so the sides are at the side. Thread a blunt darning needle with just enough yarn to sew, in this case, eight or nine stitches, uh, but you don't need yards and yards of it. The easiest place to begin is in the middle. That's where things are clearest. Now you want to hold your, your sock toe as if it were a puppet mouth. Hello, couldn't resist. And um, don't hold it like a sandwich, not like you're trying to keep the tomato from escaping from your sandwich because you can't see the junction between the two colors. Now, starting in the middle, this blue stitch here is held by this turquoise one. So if we copy or duplicate stitch that position and pull only half of the yarn through and then do a pinch test. So the sewn yarn will look happy, but more importantly is what the main color stitch looks like and it looks perfectly happy. So we're in the correct position on that side. Now let's take it out and do it wrong. You learn more from doing things wrong than getting them right by accident. So if I went here, which is not what the turquoise yarn does, I'm not copying a turquoise stitch, and pull the yarn through and do the pinch test, the dark blue yarn gets turned into a pair of parallel lines. And that's what I call the dreaded 11s. And in fact, if you look closely, that you've sewn round behind the back of a stitch, not through two adjacent ones. So we've got to establish the correct position to get started. So we're going to copy this stitch and leave half the yarn sticking out. Now we're going to come down to the opposite side and a knit stitch goes across and diagonally back a little to the right. So now on this side we have to pick a spot where the turquoise yarn comes to the edge of the dark blue. So in here, round here. So I'm duplicating this turquoise stitch. And before I pull it to shape, Let's do the pinch test. And you always do the pinch test towards the direction of the join. So and the blue stitch looks perfectly happy, but it's possible to be correct on one side and off on the other. So check both sides. Now we want to gather this. So it's about the same size and shape uh, as any of your other stitches. And from this point, once you've got it correct on both sides, all you do is go back to where you came from on the other side, copy the next waist yarn stitch. 
or you can think of it on this side as sewing around the base of a V and on this side go back to where you came from copy the turquoise stitch on this side it's like sewing around the top of a letter A and adjust these stitches as you go to get the right shape you can't just pull it tight now if I wasn't happy with this if I didn't think I got it in the right spot or I'd seen an 11 I can just pull this yarn out and you haven't got any loose stitches and then you can start again so as you get towards the corner put your finger up under underneath because there's nothing loose under there and keep on stitching away finger up underneath Go back to the main colour stitch you exited under two and I'm into the decrease area on this side and I'm into the decrease area on this side. So back to where I came from under two stitch sides and checking my knitting. Here's the column side column of stitches. And I've got a piece of pink or sewing yarn through the top of that. And this is the other side column. And I've got a piece of yarn through that. That's as far as we need go. Now at this point, we can turn it round and go the other way. If you happen to be a left hander who prefers to sew from left to right, you can do that here. There's no need to sew from right to left. And my aim of this is to help you be liberated from the need to read directions for grafting. And once you see the pattern developing, it should become a comfortable rhythm. Back to where I came from, under two stitch sides stretch the corner that stitch there takes me into the side column here one more stitch on this side will take me into this side column that's as far as i need to go if you put your fingers along on either side of a column of stitches you shouldn't see any change of direction no dreaded 11s appearing anywhere. So that sock is now successfully grafted. All that remains now is to finish it off. Now looking at it from the inside, when you're using a contrast color to sew with, you can see this clearly. This would not be as nearly as evident in a real life situation when you were using the matching sock yarn but you have created perfect twin stitches for every one of those contrasting pearl bumps on both sides. The only place there won't be is right at the very ends. Don't worry about that. Once you're happy with your grafting situation, you can now remove the waist yarn. I left a little loop there so it would be easy to pull out. There we go. And unravel. As you get close to the edge, slow down, just in case you've split a ply. And because they have twins, this waist yarn is no longer needed and I can untie it. And now all that remains is first to finish things off. I ran out of yarn right at the last minute whilst knitting the swatch, hence, hence the knot there. Now on the public side, you will have a hole in each corner. And that's one of the lovely things about this method is you have a piece of yarn with which to neaten both corners. So just take it back to where it would like to have gone 
and take it to the private side and give it a little tweak. Pop it inside and you've got a beautifully rounded, neat corner. Now, on this side, let's just say I hadn't quite got to the corner. I stopped a bit too soon. Well, when you check it, you can see, oh, I missed a stitch. Well, take your yarn into, into the loose stitch and then back to where it would like to have gone. Pop it to the inside and there's your beautiful toe, all under total control. Then on the inside, we do have three tails, one from the sock and two from the grafting. I change my needles to a slightly sharper one. And into the sole, I just gently graze the sole fabric on the diagonal, taking just a little bit of the plies of the stitch. I'm not digging right through, I'm staying on the surface. And I darned further than usual in a sock because we're usually using a superwashed yarn which won't, won't felt. Having darned in one direction, I stretch it out a little bit and then proceed on the other diagonal. So I zig and zag with each of the tails and then I cut them with a little bit sticking out and fluff up the tail. And once you've walked in that sock a couple of times, this will all settle down nicely into the sole of the sock. So even if you are very comfortable grafting off the needles, this is a very useful introduction to the use of waste yarn. It's a very powerful technique, uh, not used enough by hand knitters. And um, it can lead you on to some very powerful uh, but finishing and rescue techniques.